So today we're going to talk about hex meshing versus the tap mesher, and we're going to introduce uh, or demonstrate the uh, the new hex dominant mesher. So uh, honestly, I can't really explain what's so amazing about the hex element itself. Uh, the math is honestly beyond my ability to uh, comprehend as just a uh, a mechanical engineer. I'm sure if I was a mathematician, it'd probably make a lot more sense. But the, like most things in life, you don't really have to know how it works. You just have to know how to use it. So uh, a more straightforward example of uh, hexahedral versus tetrahedral elements, which is the most common uh, uh, type of mesh that you'll see for at least solid elements is that uh, hexahedral elements do reach uh, um, convergence or displacement, uh, theoretical uh, uh, displacement values much, much easier than do uh, tetrahedral elements. So in this example here of two uh, cantilever beans loaded in their weakest axis, we can see uh, with just one element through the uh, thickness, the hex elements can get us almost to our uh, 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 calculated max displacement, whereas the tetrahedral elements have uh, not displaced as much. And in fact, for tetrahedral elements like this, in, in a bending situation like this, you're gonna need at least three elements to the thickness to get uh, good results. Uh, so if you ever have any experience with the hex meshing, it can be a bit difficult to uh, work with. You've got to understand whether a piece of solid geometry is hex meshable or not. Uh, can you, from a 2D mesh, extrude it, revolve it, or sweep through the piece of geometry? Uh, can FEMAP identify similar top and bottom pieces of geometry? Or can the solid be divided into individual uh, individual hexable uh, solids? So some example of geometries that cannot be hex meshed as they are. Uh, you they are too complicated for the mesh uh, for the hex mesher to figure out. But if you were to split them into multiple bodies like this, the three solids, sixty or or you have to get to like 16 different splits or this or the one on the far right requires 19 different volumes that are hex meshable to then be combined together to create the one volume that we're looking for. And I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes it's difficult to see the tree in the forest or all the different trees that make up the forest. So figuring out complex geometry and how you might be able to split it up into more simpler shapes that could be hex meshable can take a significant amount of time to figure out. So the hex dominant mesher doesn't, uh, as, it, as the name implies, it doesn't uh, create uh, a hex only mesh. It, it creates uh, a mix of elements, but it prioritizes the hexahedral elements. Uh, it'll use uh, some le less common used elements such as pyramid and wedge elements to transition between the the more uh, uh, mesh favorable uh, uh, tetrahedral elements, the one that doesn't that seems to be able to mesh a lot of complex geometry and the more hexahedral, which requires more uniform or simplistic geometry. So I'm going to demonstrate the uh, functionality here and give me just a sec here. So we've got our, our, our fairly simplistic uh, looking bracket here that is not uh, um, gonna be straightforward or it can't mesh with just the hex mesh alone without some modification to the geometry uh, or splitting it up into various sections that are then hex meshable. But it's much easier just to use the, the uh, hex dominant. If we go to the mesh, there is hex mesh bodies. First, quickly define some materials. I do not have that defined. Okay, solid property. So we get the the this very simple dialog box here. Uh, most obvious here, control here is just setting the mesh size. If you haven't already seeded your model, you can enable mid-side nodes or not. 
to capture uh, curvature and geometry. So the default here of 0. Point, I'm going to go nice round 0. 0.2 and let's see what we get. It takes, it's a little slower to mesh with the hex than it is with the, just the straight uh, tetrahedral mesh. But uh, we can see here it did pretty well and nice and quick. Let's hide the geometry here. Uh, as you can see, it is mostly hex. It does a pretty good job uh, transitioning along here. We'll see some uh, what looks to be more like tetrahedral elements along uh, the curvature of the geometry here. And we can go over here to just take a look at the uh, elements it did create here. As you can see, our uh, brick 20 noted elements, uh, 4,000 of them. So the majority is. Uh, the hex elements, whereas we did get quite a bit of tetrahedral, uh, and then the pyramid and wedge elements, these are more transitionary uh, elements from the uh, the hex to the tets. We can take a quick look here, see most of the model appears to be hex, it's just around this smaller hole here where it had to transition, but it ended up with a bit more tetrahedrals, at least from what we can see this way. We'll go with the wedge, very few, a bit more of the pyramid elements. And yeah, the tetrahedrals tend to be centered around some of those transitions. But uh, obviously simple models are easier. We could have more easily turned this into a complete hex model. So there's not a huge benefit with uh, uh, using the hex mesher in a particular situation like this as it is a bit more feasible. But if we look at more complex geometry here, this one is going to take quite a bit of work to make it uh, hex meshable. We have a variety of through holes on all sides as they pass through each other along with curvature filleted region so this one will definitely take would be take a bit of work to split this thing up uh, personally not even sure where i'd want to even start first to figure out what can be hex meshable in this model so this is a perfect example of how the hex uh, dominant measure can be applied. So, but because it takes a bit of time to actually mesh this model with the hex measure longer than we could sit here, I do not know enough jokes to keep us entertained while we wait for this to mesh. I'm gonna use the power of, uh, of views to show you the post effect of the hex mesher, or the hex dominant. Let's hide some of the geometry there so we can see it better. So you can see clearly it looks very dominated by the uh, our hexahedral elements. We'll take a closer look here at our elements. Much more massively favored the uh, hexahedral element with this particular one, 70, 735,000 elements uh, with 60, with 10% uh, being tetrahedral, roughly 10% being tetrahedral and 10% uh, being pyramid. What is that, half a percent roughly? So just quick filtration here, we can see where, or highlighting, we can see where that's showing up at. Yeah, all those cross holes creating a lot of features inside the model. But yeah, ended up being predominantly uh, hexahedral elements. 
If I recall correctly, this thing took about 10 minutes or so to mesh on a laptop while it wasn't actually plugged into uh, the wall. So it was operating on uh, power consumption or minimal power consumption. So some key takeaways uh, from the hex dominant measure. Um, the advantage of hex elements is that they require fewer elements and a lower element order to reach uh, displacement convergence. So you'll end up with uh, improved performance in the analysis time. Um, it is significantly quicker and easier to create a mostly hex dominant model uh, or then manually going through slicing geometry to then create a, a hex uh, favorable model. And you also get the improved uh, performance. You save time from not having to modify the geometry to that level extent with complex geometry. Uh, and you also get improved uh, performance times because you don't need as fine of a mesh for complex geometry with hex elements. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.